Hi, this is Eric Vega with GoEngineer. In a previous video, we showed how to copy an existing study and link it to a desired FEM. In this video, I want to go over the general mesh specifications available for tetrahedron FEMs, also referred to as TETs in Simulia. In this study, you can see we have two FEMs. We'll work with the first one. Due to the multiple superposed FEMs on our display, it looks like a mess, so let's go ahead and clean it up. We can do this in a couple of ways. First, let's go into the Mesh app. I'll double click the FEM of interest to activate it. Then I'll right click the other FEM and choose Hide. If I use the Visualization Management tool, I can show all FEMs, or if I choose Contributing, this will only show the FEM that is currently active in my study. If I look back at my feature tree and expand my FEM body, I have Notes and Elements and Properties. Properties show me what section types I've assigned to these geometries. This is similar to a mesh type as a solid mesh, shell mesh, or beam mesh. Under Notes and Elements, I see the meshes that were assigned for these bodies. Here I see three individual tetrahedron meshes. I'm going to go ahead and erase this one so we can set it up together. First, I'll go to the Mesh tab, click Tetrahedron Mesh, and I'll choose the geometry I want to mesh. The first option, Initialize from Geometry, will scan your part and define mesh size and absolute sag based on its dimensions. This is a good place to start. I'll click Mesh to get a preview. When I mesh this part, I get a warning window. This tells me that there are some edges that were not able to conform to the geometry of the body I selected. If I choose this second option from the top, Edit Definition of the Selected Object, it will display and show me which edges are the ones that failed to conform to that geometry correctly. I'll hide the solid so it's easier to see. So you can see the mesh quality I got from Initialize from Geometry wasn't as good as I could have had to match this uh, shape. Mesh size will reduce the size of the mesh, but I have another parameter in Simulia. It's called Absolute Sag. Absolute Sag is the difference between the face of your geometry and the highest point of your mesh element. By reducing this value, I'm actually allowing the elements to conform better to the organic shape of the geometry. In this case, just by changing SAG by keeping the mesh size the same, I was able to take care of all those warnings. This will help reduce element size. Some of these options are actually applicable to CFD studies, not just FEA. That would be Add Boundary Layers and the Local Specifications, Local Boundary Layers, and Exclude from global boundary layers. Let's look at add boundary layers. This option will define a number of layers that will be created surrounding your geometry. Let's go ahead and choose two layers of thickness and a thickness of 0.05. I'll click mesh, then OK, and let's look at a section view to see the results. Now you can see those two layers that have been created. This mesh specification is used for CFD to capture the no slip condition that occurs on walls better. The next option, Edit All Parameters, gives you very granular control over what geometry the measure is going to solve or ignore. These are very nuanced sets of options, so we'll cover them in another video. I'll click OK to go back to my general mesh settings. The next option, Notes and Mesh Edges and Constraints, allows to superpose, imprint, or project an existing mesh, like this one right here, onto the mesh that you've selected. This will ensure the two FEMs will have common nodes. To be clear as to what's occurring, I'm going to go ahead and hide that logo that we utilized for this option, so we can see the mesh refinement a bit more clearly. 
and deselect these options and click Mesh to update the mesh without any refinements. Next is Local Mesh Size. This is very similar to what you've seen in SOLIDWORKS simulation. To select the faces, I have to show the geometry. I can select faces, edges, and vertices. I'll input my values for element size and sag. Then I'll click Mesh to see my preview. The feature tree will now show you that local mesh specification we've added. Here you can double click it to modify it individually or erase it from your mesh. The next option is Impose Points. If we look up close, we'll notice that these mesh elements do not share a node on this point from a curve in my model. Impose Points will allow you to select existing points so that you can have more granular control over how or where your elements meet. When I click Mesh to look at a preview, we'll see that point is now where all those elements meet. Next, we have Project Curves. Similar to Impose Curves, this allows us to select curves that we can impose into the creation of our mesh. By selecting these four and giving it a tolerance, I'm telling Simulia that it's able to be off by 0.1 inches from these curve selections. I'll click Mesh and we'll see how these edges now follow that curve. We can now see those elements are following the curve I imposed in it. Next, we have Preserve Boundaries. This will be best understood in this component down here. For now, let's move to the next one, Face Capture. Similar to Notes and Mesh Edges and Constraints, Face Capture will actually allow me to select faces of other components to add local mesh refinements. The difference is Face Capture is an independent mesh specification as opposed to Notes and Mesh Edges and Constraints. The next option, Local Boundary Layers, allow you to create a mesh specification of layers in just an independent face. Let me click the side and create three layers of that thickness and then click Mesh. Similar to Add Boundary Layers, this will be more visible in a section view. Let's hide the geometry. We can now see that it's actually created three layers on that face in addition to all the other mesh refinements we added. The last option here is Exclude from Global Boundary Layers. If we selected Add Boundary Layers, we could have omitted faces to not have layers created by selecting that face. You'll notice that this option is only available if Add Boundary Layers is enabled. When unchecked, the option is grayed out. Now let's look at Preserve Boundaries in this little logo mesh body. I'll hide this uh, mesh so it's easier to see what we'll be doing here. When I go into the tetrahedral mesh logo, you can see the geometry actually has a slight step. Unfortunately, my current mesh size and absolute sag are not enough to catch it correctly. We only have a slight slanted element in place of that step. The option Preserve Boundaries allows you to tell the measure that you mean to keep these faces. Since these are not tangent but have certain angles, I will use the option to select by propagation. I'll use 5 degrees to propagate by, click Propagate, and similar to Select Tangency in SOLIDWORKS, it grabs all the other faces around. Now, when I mesh my body, we have forcefully made the measure taking account that step that it previously ignored, as you can see on this side. We have two more options. This edit button brings the mesh editing workbench. This is a very advanced and also very nuanced tool that we'll be covering in another video. I'll click exit app to get out of it. 
Well, that concludes everything for this mesh refinement video. As an overview, we've covered global and local mesh specifications for tetrahedron meshes and how to use the mesh warning window to help us troubleshoot issues in our mesh. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks on how to use Emulia in the platform. Thanks for watching.